Hello everyone, welcome to Scalers YouTube channel and in this video we will be talking about a complete career roadmap for you to get into game development. Before we begin with the roadmap, I would like to give a quick introduction for the world of game development in general. So making games is a really complicated task. Uh, I'm sure you must have played a lot of games and I'm sure you must have had a ton of amazing time playing those games. But playing games and making games are two different tasks. And a lot of people might think that, you know, making games might be a cakewalk, might be like a complete uh, fun field to, uh, you know, enter yourself into. And while majority of that thought process is definitely true, obviously who wouldn't want to make games as a career, right? Uh, but uh, if you dive a little bit deeper into that, uh, then you come to know about the nitty gritties of this field. So when it comes to game development, uh, you know, it is more or less like a software industry wherein you have to learn some uh, technical skills in order to be proficient uh, game developer. And uh, after that, you have to really give your best in order to make sure that you, uh, you know, keep on upgrading and upskilling yourself. Uh, so that's a little bit about the entire uh, game development scenario. Uh, in terms of the scope in this field, obviously, you know, in the recent times, there have been tons of improvements and uh, advancements in this field. So in today's times, it is uh, really uh, easy for you to actually pick up the skill of game development and learn. You just have to give your time to this skill and, uh, you know, groom yourself and anyone essentially can become a game developer, be it a 12 year old kid or a 40 year old man or woman. Uh, you can really, uh, you know, just invest your time in learning this skill and become a game developer. Uh, what do you need? Essentially, it is just your time and the right resources. Uh, identifying the right resources will, is very critical uh, because when you get started in this field, really you are uh, restricted only by your imagination. The field of game development is so amazing. You are essentially literally giving life to inanimate objects which in itself is a wonderful thing to do. Now, when it comes to uh, making games, uh, the primary thing that you need to keep in mind is why do you actually want to choose game development as a field? Um, all right, you like playing games, that's one thing. Uh, that can be a really good motivator, but why choose game development? Let's also deep dive into all the external aspects on what would make a game development a really good field for you to be a part of. One is definitely the creative aspect. You get to create some really amazing games and you get to work on ideas uh, that can potentially become really successful. Uh, as a really uh, good case of uh, example, I would give an example of this game called Flappy Bird. Now Flappy Bird was developed by a Vietnamese developer and uh, what he had done was he had uploaded the game and essentially just forgotten about it. And then one fine day what happened is a really big popular YouTuber by the name PewDiePie ended up making a video wherein the title of the video was do not play this game. And this uh, video essentially covered how frustrating this game was. And uh, as I mentioned, Flappy Bird was a game that was developed by this Vietnamese developer and he had almost forgotten about it. But instantly after that video of uh, PewDiePie, this game became an overnight success. And uh, at its peak, it was earning almost more than $50,000 per day from ad revenue itself. So that can be the second motivator, which is money. Obviously, uh, you know, if you want to survive in any field or advance in your career, you need money as a motivator to, you know, make sure that you are upskilling yourself as well as uh, whatever you're doing. Uh, everything essentially boils down to your money making skills. So be it programming, be it uh, business development, be it uh, making art, everything really boils down to how you are able to use your skill uh, to monetize yourself. Uh, it's uh, everything just literally boils down to that. So uh, certainly that can be one uh, way to look at it. The third thing is just to be a part of this industry and make sure that whatever you are making really makes a difference in someone's life. Uh, so it, you can look at it from a perspective that whatever you are developing today will potentially be played by thousands or millions of uh, users. So you get to learn about people's psychology and uh, you get to impact people in meaningful ways through games. Uh, nowadays, a lot of uh, institutes also rely on games to educate their students. Gamification has become a big umbrella term wherein, uh, you know, people are now using games to actually educate people, uh, not just in terms of uh, school education, 
but also in terms of uh, actual um, training, hands-on training, simulations, etc., etc. Uh, a lot of flight simulation really happens on a computer, which is in fact a part uh, and a form of a game. Um, so there have been a lot of simulations. Uh, there have been a lot of interesting entertainment avenues. There have been, uh, you know, all of this uh, research that is going into actually making games. So uh, this is this is literally the best time to start your career in game development. Literally, you know, there is I think uh, very few other professions such as game development. Uh, and is there a scope in this career? Absolutely, absolutely there is and that's primarily because in the recent times there have been so many advancements be it in terms of the technological advancements, be it in terms of the ease of you entering into this industry, uh, be it in terms of uh, the support and infrastructure that has been growing all around us. Everything literally has aided us to ensure that game development becomes a really easy skill to acquire. Uh, there are also different different ways that you can structure this and you can approach it either from a pure self-learning perspective or you can go ahead and join an institute and spend some amount to also acquire a degree. Um, and there have been uh, like really good institutes over the last few years that are actually also offering degree courses um, in game development. Some of them are in India, some of the, um, them are abroad, but uh, you know, largely speaking, I think if you are able to afford that formal education, by all means go for it because a lot of the better institutes also offer you placements. That's one thing. Uh, the other thing can be uh, like you just want to you know, essentially uh, secure a job for yourself making games and that's also a fun thing to do. Obviously not as fun as you might imagine it to be, but certainly a um, majority of the part is fun and games because you are literally making games, which is a source of entertainment for tons of people. So you can uh, kind of, you know, build up your resume and uh, typically like any other job, uh, you can uh, find out game development companies and start applying over there. Uh, once you apply uh, to these companies, you will then also be uh, literally given a course uh, career uh, path wherein you can actually uh, get hands-on life experience after joining these companies. So uh, you can start off as an intern level, uh, you can then move on as a fresher, then a mid-level uh, person, then a senior person and so on and so forth. So the reason why I talk about job as a course is because it also gives you hands-on guidance on what is it that you need to actually become a game developer. You have to start literally at the bottom and then scale yourself up to the top. So those are broadly the reason why you should choose game development as your career. Certainly there is a little bit of job insecurity in this field primarily because of the demand and supply. Uh, a lot of people want to become game developers. But the supply of that is that there are extremely limited number of studios and the better studios are even further more lesser than that. So uh, it's essentially a risk that you're taking and that's the reason why I always mention to anyone uh, who is an aspiring game developer is that you must, must, must finish your basic education because it is not guaranteed that you will end up getting a job in game development. It is simply not guaranteed. So in order to secure yourself, I always tell people that at least have some basic degree with you. It can either be a BCom course, it can either be a BTech degree, it can be a simple master's degree, whatever it is, um, you know, just go for it and secure a degree for yourself because you may not end up getting a job in game development and you may not end up making a game that might become a, a success immediately. However, if you persist, if you persevere in this industry, then the chances of you landing up a job or the chances of your game becoming successful become higher. So it's all a matter of patience and perspective. So you need to have that kind of perspective with you that if I'm pursuing this field, I have to make sure that I have to give my best and nothing less than the best and have virtually no expectations from how things pan out. Uh, I understand that this might be a little bit demotivating to hear, but this is in a sense the reality of the situation in this field. And this is not just the case in India, mind you. This is the case worldwide. If you want to become a game developer, a lot of people get fascinated towards this industry just because they uh, at once upon a time loved playing games. And while it's true for almost all the game developers, 
it is certainly not true that making games is all fun and games as i have been repeatedly saying that uh, making games might not be just pure fun because it is literally like any other job you have to give your time you have to give your effort you have to be patient and you have to make sure that you do not get demotivated by the constant failures let me give you a very simple story there was a company once upon a time that ended up making one game that game was not as successful as they imagined it to be but they did not give up they ended up making a second game the same story repeated this went on they made 12 games the same story repeats uh, they found moderate level of success with a couple of titles but nothing that would rise them up to a pedestal wherein they could say that hey this is our flagship product this went on for almost 6 years and by this point of time the company decided that we will just give this one last try and if it doesn't work out we will wind up the operations this will be our last game uh, and they did exactly that the game was launched but fortunately favoring their uh, fortunes the game went on to become a success and that game guys is angry birds and the company that i'm talking about is lofi it was incorporated back in 2003 and it took them 6 years in 2009 to churn out a hit title and that is angry birds and now it is angry birds it's known by all it is all a success story Uh, people are applauding uh, Rovio for their uh, amazing game, but till the point of time they did not reach Angry Birds level success, they were more or less not a well-known studio. That same thing will happen to you if you are entering into the game development industry as a game developer. If you are entering into the market and launching your own games and not working for a company, this is the narrative that is going to happen with you. most certainly you would be lucky if your first game is a success but it is not guaranteed that your next game might end up enjoying the same level of uh, success that your first game might have there are obviously outliers in every industry there are outliers and there are a lot of misconceptions as well uh, i always keep on mentioning about this whenever i talk to people uh, people have a very big misconception whenever you type on google uh, minecraft development time now minecraft is the biggest and most popular one of the biggest and most popular games out there uh, on the global front and when you type on google how much time did it take to actually make minecraft it says 6 days and that's just on the surface that's that's just perhaps maybe the basic road blocking or you know blocking or the prototyping of that game but that game is still today under production it has not been abandoned in terms of the production there are still people who are working on the updates so if you look at it in that perspective minecraft to this date is not a complete game it is still constantly under development and there are constantly updates that are being pushed to the game so when you are looking at game development from a perspective saying that hey i will end up making a game in 6 days or a week or like a month and then i'll just enjoy the benefits for the a lifetime that certainly is not true it takes a lot to make a game most definitely but it takes a lot to maintain that game as well and maintaining marketing is what all game development is about is what all the success uh, part gets attributed to because let's face it anyone in today's day an age can make a game uh, all the resources are available but when you make a game the real question is that are you able to actually impact people are people liking what you've made because that is what your narrative will say it it does not matter if you can make a game or not what matters is are you able to market your game well are you able to get the discoverability that your game deserves or does not deserve whatever the case might be if your game is good or not right and this is something that you as a game developer cannot decide you cannot control this this control and this decision is in the hands of the players 
the decision whether or not a game is good or bad lies in the hands of the players and you cannot force that decision on your players you just have to wait it out you just have to put your game out there and hopefully pray that your game gets liked by people but if it does not get liked by people then you should not get demotivated you have to keep that learning with you which will effectively help you make a better game next time and it is also mandatory and critical to know when to stop uh, i always tell people that whenever you start game development or start making a game always set deadlines for yourself and set deadline buffers let's say for example you've estimated that i'm going to make so and so game it is going to take me 3 months to make it uh, and these are my uh, deadlines divide those deadlines into different different milestones whenever we think of making a big game uh, we get you know surprised and flabbergasted or uh, you know daunted by the scale of things but let's say if you were to break down that bigger game into smaller chunks and approach those chunks step by step one by one then it becomes an easier process for you as well to make that game so one more advice would be whenever you are starting to make a game never go after making a big game because that will simply burn you out it might not even uh, you know end up getting finished you may abandon the project uh, and if you do that then it's essentially just a complete waste of your own time so whenever you are starting making a game always start from a small game always start from uh, whatever is already built uh, if you can essentially add something on top of that then well and good for you but if not at least start to make some smaller games start to approach these games in a way that okay i will learn step by step if you are just starting out in this industry making a big game on your very first try can be a really harmful thing for your career as a whole because as i mentioned you don't know what works so effectively it's better if you perhaps make a very smaller version of the bigger game that you're planning or small modules of the bigger game that you're planning test it out with the audience take feedback and if that feedback is positive then keep on building on that feedback otherwise essentially what you're doing is you're just uh, creating a bleeding bucket what you could say an overflowing bucket or like a leaky bucket right you need not put in maximum efforts and just have your bucket leaking or you don't even want holes in your bucket that makes it leaky so you have to figure out that balance you have to figure out when to stop and you have to figure out when to start marketing your game additionally as i mentioned you also have to figure out whatever you've made is it good or not if it is not good then you have to take the conscious decision to actually also abandon the development of your game and this comes only after you've launched your game i'm not saying you should abandon your game during development obviously that's not a good thing to do but let's say if you launched a game and you realize that um, Uh, you know it's not working out people are not playing my game people are not liking my game uh, and if the retention number is like really low say your retention number is less than 10% now we'll also touch upon a uh, little but upon uh, what retention is but just giving you a fair idea if your retention number is like really poor then it is really difficult for you to you know even get that game out there marketed to people now let's come on to the part of retention now what is retention exactly so let's say for example you have downloaded a game it can be an any game right if you like the game a simple uh, common sense logic is if you like the game you will keep on coming back to the game you will keep on playing that game for one day two day three day seven day 30 days whatever that is and that essentially means that you are you know getting retained by that game okay you are coming back to the game it's it's exclusively you know uh, deals with the fact of you wanting to play that game and wanting to come back that's one thing so this helps you with the retention of uh, your game all right and this needs to be high at least above 40 or 45% uh, on a positive side for you to validate that what i you were you built is really good to play so for example if your 100 people are downloading your game uh, on zero day okay that's the day that your game is getting launched if 100 people are playing your game 
and out of those hundred people, forty-five of them are coming back to your game to play it again the next day. That means your retention is forty-five percent, and then day one retention is forty-five percent, uh, and so on and so forth. This retention number keeps on dropping. Then you have to make sure that the drop is really low. So, for example, if day one is uh, day one is forty-five percent, perhaps day two can be forty-four percent, forty-three percent, forty-three point x percent, or something. So that fall of users is inevitable, definitely. But that fall should be should not be drastic. It should be gradual. All right. So that's the thing that you have to keep in mind that whatever you end up making is also liked by the audience, liked by the users. So that's that's a little bit about you know what you can do to ensure to become a, a, a you know game developer and make games. Now let's come on to the topic of skills that are required to become a game developer. So it is different for different job roles. Um, there are multiple you know job roles in the game development industry. One can be either you can become a game programmer, you can become a game artist, you can do marketing of games, you can become a game designer. Uh, so all of these different different job roles. Require different skill sets. Let me first differentiate a little between a game artist and a game designer because this is the common confusion that a lot of people have. A game artist is essentially someone who makes the art of the game. Uh, it is very much straightforward and self-explanatory. But the reason why I'm stressing and actually putting this out in a video is because a game artist is someone who makes art, but a game designer is not the same as game artist. A game designer is someone who conceptualizes of how the game is actually going to be played. The role of a game designer is to actually make documents. It should document how your game will work. How, what are the different kinds of game mechanics uh, that your game should have? So that is the primary role of a game designer. Whereas the game artist primarily deals with all your game assets, art assets, and stuff. So let's say let's take a deep dive into the skills that are required now. If you are a game programmer, you obviously need to know programming. As a starting point, I would suggest you to get started and learn C plus plus because C plus plus is a very good programming skill and programming language to learn. All right. Uh, once you've learned and mastered the basics of C plus plus, after this, picking up any language becomes essentially very easy for you because. When you look at programming, it's all the very uh, core, basic, same concepts that get used uh, to make whatever kind of code that you are, uh, you know, imagining it uh, to make. So that is really helpful um, to become a game programmer. When it comes to game artist, now you have to determine what kind of an artist you want to become. So do you want to become a two D artist? Do you want to become a three D artist? These two have different, different, uh, you know, uh, roles within themselves as well. So game art. Is a wide umbrella term, and within game art, there is 2D art, 3D art, illustrations, um, character art, character modeling, 3D modeling, uh, props modeling, and then character animation. Then there is uh, you know environment design, lighting. Uh, all of these things come under different different categories of game art. So you have to then determine a couple of softwares that you need to learn. Uh, so for 3D modelers, you can work with 3ds Max, Maya. Uh, for sculpting, you can use Mudbox or ZBrush. Uh, for making animations, I think for uh, 3D animations, you can very well do them in Maya as well. Uh, and for 2D, there's this really good software called Spine 2D. You can rely and make on uh, 2D animations uh, on that software. Uh, in terms of uh, you know your uh, 2D asset creation, I think Photoshop can be a good. Um, Tool to use even Illustrator can be a good tool to use. So that's um, on the 2D side of things, uh, and I also mentioned about the 3D aspect too. So that's about the game art side of things. And when it comes to game designers, then this gets a little bit tricky because as a game designer, you need to know what makes a game fun to play. So as a starting uh, roadmap for a game designer, I would recommend you to simply just start um, you know writing and making documents of all the games that you like playing so say for example you enjoy playing a racing game pick that up write down all the highlight points on what you think makes the game fun to play and keep on doing this exercise keep on you know making game design documents for essentially any game that you like and this is how you will keep on upskilling yourself as a game designer because the 
the job role of game designer is to just think it's all about you know thinking about how you can make a good game and you need to have that kind of psychology you need to have that understanding of what makes a game fun to play and that is essentially what will help you become a better game designer uh, then there is also this really interesting uh, uh, job role of game testing uh, and everyone just goes um, haywire over game testing uh, they think that hey game testing is the best job ever you get paid to play games what can be more fun than this and uh, this is actually uh, um, the total opposite because when it comes to game testing you are not playing the games that you love you are playing games that are being developed that are in development stages and you might not enjoy playing those games but you anyway have to play them because you have actually committed as a game tester to actually play those games so it is a blessing and a course both at the same time that uh, you get to play games as your job but you might not necessarily enjoy playing those games because as a game tester again your job becomes that of a writer you have to log bugs you have to make sure that you know uh, the issues that are being created in the game get communicated to the uh, game programmer and uh, there's always this love hate relationship between a game tester and a game programmer because a game tester always finds fault in the code that was written by a game programmer. So this, this is a really interesting aspect but as a game tester the only skill that you should have is intense testing uh, and kind of an aptitude to find faults. Uh, so those are generally the broad skills that you require to become a game developer. When it comes to game marketing I think uh, a deeper understanding of your target audience let's say for example you've made some game and you want to market it well so there are two things that you need to take into account one is uh, your uh, game marketing um, expenses obviously your uh, you need to chart out a budget to make sure that you tap into the right marketing channels to uh, reach out to your audience the second is uh, how much does it take to acquire one user and everything essentially just boils down to that unit economics how much does it cost to acquire one user? How much are we making from one user? And is there a profit or not? If you are able to identify and analyze these things, then you can effectively start marketing your games in an effective manner. Because if a game does not give you a positive ROI, then there's no point in marketing that game. Because it's, it's again, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be a leaky bucket. No matter how much money you put into marketing, if it is not giving you that positive ROI on your unit economics, then it will effectively, you know, turn you into a loss making uh, venture or a company or an um, endeavor for that matter. So yeah, generally, these are the things that you need to keep in mind when it comes to acquiring skills to become a game developer. Let's come now to the type of roles in game development. As I mentioned earlier, the roles broadly, right? Uh, these are uh, the very uh, basic roles that you can find in game development. Let's just take a quick recap of what all the roles are available in the game development industry. So firstly, I mentioned about game programmers uh, and within game programmers, there can be multiple different types of programmers as well. Some programmers are comfortable just with UI programming, some are comfortable uh, making game mechanics, some are uh, focused on creating gameplay experiences, some are uh, cutscene programmers, some are sound programmers. So there's a wide variety of subcategories within the programming uh, job role itself. Then when it comes to a, a 2D artist, one can be a 2D animator or a, a, a poster designer, a graphic designer, uh, uh, essentially maybe a 2D animator of sorts, uh, or you know you, they can also create 2D artworks for different, different types of games. Sprite sheet creator can be one job role. Uh, uh, when it comes to a 3D um, uh, pipeline, uh, 3D modelers are there, 3D uh, texturing artists are there, um, then sculpting artists are there, animators, 3D animators are there, which is again a different uh, ball game altogether, which is complemented by a rigging artist, wherein you create a character and then give bones and all those structures to your character. Uh, post that, if you look at game testers, then that is one job role. In addition to that, game designing is also one uh, large umbrella term. Within game design, you can have uh, proper game designers, then level designers, experience designers, monetization designers. So it's a wide field and 
the pie is so big of this entire field that you can essentially pick any skill that you have uh, and you can have any skill and get it complemented by a skill that is a part of the game development pipeline or ecosystem. So that's the power of game development that there are multiple roles in game development that you can pick as per what you are comfortable with. So it's not anymore about you know game development is not for everyone. Most certainly there are job roles that can um, you know be fit into any other job role. So there's the marketing department, there's a proper development department, art department, programming department. Uh, you can also perhaps try your hands in hiring game developers if you like hiring then perhaps you can get started as a HR human resource as well uh, in game development because finding good talent in game development is also very difficult. You know you have to always be on the lookout for great talent and uh, the supply and demand is uh, a bit mismatched I would say. The supply of people who want to get into this industry is so much more higher than the demand. There are only a limited few companies out there who are uh, you know, hiring and uh, professionally recruiting people. But the amount of people that want to get into this field is just simply extremely high. So that's just one thing from my side uh, about you know, the different types of roles in game development. Now let's come to uh, what are the scopes for these job roles. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned, since the demand is um, you know, limited, uh, but it is extremely laser focused demand like the companies know that they want to hire for this specific job role only when it goes anything beyond that the requirement is simply not there so the scope really depends on the kind of requirements that the companies have however uh, in recent times a lot of new companies have started popping up a lot of new indie game developers have started popping up so the scope has gradually started to expand uh, and hopefully there might be one day wherein the demand and supply both start to meet but the probability of that seems really low however uh, things can change because a lot of indie developers are now also starting their new studios so it will be exciting to see in the next five years or so uh, where we are at because Ever since 2013, this industry has be seen a tremendous amount of growth, especially in India. Uh, after the launch of the iPhone, the entire gaming market was democratized. And because of that, now it is extremely easy for anyone to have an entry into this field because now the barrier to entry has become really, really low. So those are a couple of thoughts on the scope and really the scope depends on your skills. Uh, there is definitely most certainly scope for uh, anyone to become big in game development but is there scope for you specifically depends entirely on how much you are uh, willing to give the time effort and energy in order to pick up the skill of your choice in this particular field now let's come to the salary roles and responsibilities of a game developer uh, certainly you know game development uh, since the demand is less and the supply is high uh, that's the reason why the salaries are relatively on the lower side of things. Uh, if you are a fresher, you can get anywhere between uh, 15,000 or 20,000 at max. That's also if you are lucky. Uh, generally, the salaries are lower than this, lesser than this. If you are a mid-level resource or a fresher, uh, a fresher salary can start anywhere upwards of 25,000 or so. Uh, a mid-level resource can be anywhere between 35 or 40,000 per month. Uh, all the figures that I am mentioning are in rupees, Indian rupees uh, and if you are a senior level resource then obviously you can earn as high as 50,000 per month or even 1 lakh per month. So the salary ranges uh, based on your expertise and your negotiation skills. So it's, it's really a matter of how you are able to groom yourself and what kind of skills you are uh, willing to bring to the table because your salary is really defined on uh, what kind of impact you would have on the company's operations that's there uh, when it comes to roles and responsibilities uh, if you are joining a indie game development studio then you will have to wear multiple hats you perhaps might have to write code as well as do a little bit of art um, and you have to juggle responsibilities but when it comes to bigger established studios or AAA studios things start to change in slightly established studios 
you will be doing just one thing perhaps maybe you will be handling the programming department or doing tons of different different things in programming you may not necessarily need to do art or anything so that way your job role is extremely laser focused and defined but when it comes to triple a studios you might end up doing just one subset of your entire skills um, uh, you know uh, availability so perhaps uh, in triple a studios you might be given a task say you will be doing only this small module for the entire project because when it comes to triple a game you are now dealing with scale you are dealing with a huge scale project wherein your contribution as a game developer or as a game artist or as a game designer will be infinitesimally smaller then um, uh, you know as you compare to being in a mid level or an indie studio because there the pipeline of that triple a studio is set they know that they need only x amount of things from this particular resource or so so therein it becomes just a you know fact of, of them allocating different different resources to different different subject matter so uh, those are you know primarily the roles uh, as and when you rise up the ladder uh, your roles and responsibilities relatively start to be more in the managerial space uh, rather than in the production space uh, so that's there uh, but you know when it comes to a triple a studio a lot of people uh, think that he i would love to be a part of a triple a studio but they fail to realize that as and when you start to aim for the stars in this particular field when you are a part of a triple a studio your production responsibilities will be extremely low because you are not a dependency on any big task as such the pipeline is designed in such a way at triple a studios that even if you are not able to churn out your particular output it gets replaced very quickly and uh, you know the company does not completely rely on you they have set processes they have set pipelines when you are a part of a mid level company then obviously there are a lot of uh, expectations from you uh, and uh, it is completely 100 you there are 200% expectations i would say from an indie game development studio from you if you are a part of an indie game dev studio because there you have to literally wear multiple hats you have to do tons of things and you have to done, uh, do them in an effective way because otherwise it's all a matter of survival so that's not really a problem when it comes to triple a studio they just need to get work done from you that's it so these are in general in a sense the salaries roles and responsibilities of a game developer let's now come to some of the top companies that hire for these particular roles so uh, as we walked through all of these uh, different facets now it comes to the question that hey all right all said and done I uh, I want to actually start a career in game development. So, what can be the potential companies that will end up hiring me? On a triple A scale, uh, I would say there are uh, very few studios that work on triple uh, A titles. To name a few, I would say Rockstar Games is one uh, company. Uh, you can apply for EA Games. You can apply for Ubisoft. Ubisoft, uh, Rockstar Games, and EA Games. All of these also have their offices in India. So that's a good thing. Uh, apart from that on a mid scale or like a established studio scale there are multiple other studios as well uh, to name a few perhaps uh, nazara technologies is one company games to win is there even our studio gameion studios is actually uh, a decent uh, mid size studio that is now working on a high quality uh, game as well uh, there is underdogs gaming studio there is ogrehead studio lucid labs so there are tons of companies out there and lucid labs by the way borders on an indie scale uh, so on an indie level there are multiple studios out there uh, there are one person uh, studios there are uh, small uh, teams of say four or five members so all you need to do is just essentially explore this entire field and you will be able to actually uh, perhaps land a job in one of these companies and if you are a fresher i would say go ahead and take the first job that you get learn from that experience it might be a positive experience it might be a negative experience that does not matter what matters is you taking the initiative and actually starting out to um, effectively you know uh, make sure that you are working towards achieving what you want to do and that end goal is to actually make games so if it gives you joy if uh, you know 
investing a little bit of time uh, in the initial years uh, helps you build a career path ahead so i would say that go ahead take that uh, career path so to sum it up if you want a complete career road map i will make it extremely easy for you there are two career paths in game development one is either you end up making your own games and monetize them second you work for another game development company and rise up the ladders as and when you make progress let's look at the second part because that's the easiest part first step would be learn the skill of making games but because obviously right if you want to be a, a part of a company uh, and do a job you need to know the skill that is required for you to be employed in that job so one is firstly definitely learn the skill second apply for internship as soon as you have picked up that skill this can be uh, let's say maybe like a month into the skill two months into the skill whatever just go ahead and blindly apply for an internship on in any studio that you get all right because uh, applying for an internship you will get to learn a lot of things that uh, you will know uh, only being a part of the production pipeline otherwise there are you know just by self learning there is very limited amount of knowledge that you will get uh, otherwise if don't want to uh, do internships and you have a little bit of money or your parents can support your education then join a decent and well institute a good institute uh, to learn this skill and now uh, you can either go for an indian institute or you can go abroad and join that institute uh, i would say uh, some really good institutes are there uh, established abroad however if you do end up going abroad I would request you to come back to our country and use that knowledge and perhaps build uh, an infrastructure and a good career over here. So that's there. Once you have both these things in place, uh, either you have a degree in game development or you have an internship in game development, you then can start applying to actual uh, fresher level jobs. So that can be your career roadmap. And once you are a fresher in the field. then after this it becomes really easy for you to uh, make a switch to another studio or perhaps even get promoted in the studio that you get hired uh, this is also a really good road map when you start off with a company and you stay with that company throughout your entire lifetime that is also a good way to approach this because that shows healthy promise uh, from you as an employee to the employer and uh, if you stay uh and be a part of that particular company eventually things can be uh, well for you as well uh but for whatever even if you do want to switch then that is also a decent career road map now coming to the question of making your own games that here the things get a little bit tricky as we saw in the earlier example that angry birds was rovio's uh 52nd 53rd or so game right so before that they had to endure through 50 plus failures and this is what happens in game development you as a game developer cannot guarantee that whatever you are making will become a success so the career road map for uh, you to become a game developer is extremely i would say difficult uh, but at the same time extremely rewarding as well because we saw Fla flappy birds uh, was actually uh, earning 50000 per day in terms of revenue in terms of just simple pure ad revenue if you are able to tap into success like that then nothing like it if you are able to make a game that gets enjoyed by thousands and millions of users then that itself is a feeling that is unparalleled in terms of joy uh, and that i believe is a really good road map as well uh, as an indie game developer uh, you need uh, to constantly showcase your game as well because whenever you make something you are not making it for yourself you are making it for the audience so always have this at the back of your head that hey okay i am investing my time in making this game fine but it should not be done in silo it should always be communicated to real users because you as a game developer you don't know if whatever you've made will be actually appreciated or liked by the people so there always needs to be a market validation for the product that you make there always needs to be an audience that you have to reach out to uh, that uh, are willing to play your game so that's one part of it the second part is that uh, you need to be patient there's no second uh, answer to this you need to be patient because there is no you know recipe for you to make a successful game if that was the case everyone would have been aware of it and then 
even the successful companies would have just ended up making successful games only. But there are, we've seen a countless number of times that even the bigger studios end up making games that might not do well in the market. So there's no recipe as such, it's just pure hard work, it's just you wanting to uh, upskill yourself and uh, trying to learn how the audience t uh, thinks. Uh, if you are able to master all of these things, I think you can become a really good game developer. Uh, with that being said, I think I have covered most of the aspects uh, that are required to become a game developer. I have also given a complete career roadmap. So if you like this video, uh, do hit the like button. If you are finding Scaler's channel for the first time, subscribe to them and hit the bell icon so you don't miss another uh, update from their end. I have got a couple of videos um, uploaded onto the Scaler's channel as well. So be sure to check that out. I have also recorded a basic uh, course for you to pick up Unity Game Engine as a skill. So check that video out as well. Thank you for watching till this end. Uh, I wish you all the best for your career in game development. Take care and hit the like button if you liked it. And follow Scaler for more updates. Thank you.